Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Fanatic News. I'm Joe Boric, and this is going to be on the early season dominance of the Colorado Rockies. As can that continue? That's what this video is going to be about. Let's examine it. I'm not so sure beating, as you can see behind the fan. I'm a team of really magnifies your success early in a season when they've been dog trash, and that's the Philadelphia Phillies. But it's still good for the Rockies to be able to get, in their fans' perspective, and their team's perspective, two wins uh, and already win this series um, out there in Colorado. Uh, CJ Crone has been a power-hitting demon. He's been, honestly, a guy that's got better as he's got older. He was more of a minor leaguer early in his career, worked his way up to the bigs in his later 20s, and then just has continued to progress. So that's good to see. Connor Joe is going nuts early, hitting 349. Chris Bryant, they knew was going to be a stud coming in. It was just more, it's odd you got rid of Arenado and signed Bryant, but obviously working so far. Elias Diaz is not going to hit 306 all season. No crap, but he's definitely off to a good start. Charlie Blackman, though, is going to pick up his hitting. There's no way he's going to hit 229 all season. And Ryan McCann's not going to hit 200 all season. The guy they seem to be developing into one of those kind of sleeper guys on the team that has pop. And it has the ability to go yard at any given moment or hit a key double for your team. So he's kind of one of those sleeper players that can be really good for the Rockies and an X factor for them if they do stay in a race this year. Um, Grichik's been great off to a start early. Iglesias has been off to a great start. Hiller is off to a great early start. And same with Yandy Diaz. So when it comes to this team, as I look for wherever the hell I put that thing that I wrote the division prediction predictions on, I know for a fact I did not have the Rockies all too high in that because I have no idea where I put that piece of paper. I'll have to um, find that. But I know I definitely had <clears throat> the Rockies much lower, and I had the Giants and Dodgers in first. I think it was the Giants, Dodgers, Padres, Rockies, Diamondbacks. So I had the Rockies in fourth. So obviously early in the season... I'm eating Major Crow on that, but not so much with the fact that the Dodgers and Giants aren't ba are, are, are a good team. The Giants are just on a two-game losing streak. They have to find somebody to replace Cobb in the rotation, but they have found pitching out of nowhere, out of dust almost. They're kind of, uh, it seems like with Cap there, turning into kind of the A's, just finding a guy and being able to develop him, like Zachary Littell, for example. He's not a starter, but how they did it as a reliever, they could probably do something like that with a starter. They also got the best out of Di Scafani, so they've been getting the best seasons out of people. The Dodgers are just stacked, so I believe the Dodgers and Giants are still going to be the top two teams of that division, which is the point of this video. The Rockies are off to a fantastic start, but can it continue? I do personally don't see it yet this is a such a small sample size eight and three only 11 games i don't see them as a playoff team yet just from this sample size because we see multiple teams including the baltimore freaking orioles that are still have been rebuilding for a millennium it seems like now uh get off to hot starts of a season and to me that just doesn't really mean anything it means something after maybe 25, after 35, after what. Once you get to that point and you have a bigger sample size than a thing that's a 162 game season, the by far the longest in all of sports, then I'll be talking about the Rockies maybe being a surprise team this year. As of right now, the Rockies are not a surprise team for me because why would they be? Uh, it's, it's a short sample size. So I still have the Giants winning that division. I still have the Dodgers coming in second, the Padres coming in third and the Rockies coming in fourth, with the Diamondbacks being a far-out um, fifth, where I think everybody has them pegged right. But how the guys like Hilliard started, how guys like C.J. Crone started, it's fantastic for the Rockies that they're taking advantage of their stadium. But <clears throat> the big thing there is, it's not like they have the most stacked uh, pitching. Kyle Freeland really struggles now. If Chad Cole can, he's not going to pitch a .87 whip in the yard. But if he can have his career season with the Rockies, that'll help them big time. Uh, but it, it's really, I think, their lineup's fine. I think I even said that when I talked about that division. Their pitching isn't. It's more if they're pitching and step up and young guys that have been mediocre lately, like Freeland, can get back to rookie year stuff. Then, yeah, they'll be set, but that's a big if. So I still don't see them as a playoff team. But it's cool that they got off to this fire bunny start for their fans, and Chris Bryant's infused well. C.J. Crone's been great since going there. So there's things moving in the right direction that it seems like the Rockies in the next year or two are definitely going to be more of a team that can, especially with the expanded playoffs, 
get into the playoffs. But this has been a quick video on are the Rockies for real yet or not. Oh, I just hit the mic. My apologies. <laughs> But as of right now, I would say no, not yet. It's way too early in a baseball season to call a team for real yet. Peace out, everybody, and stay safe.